In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the proper way to use Mabel coverage to make your defense more effective at stopping some of the most popular concepts from some of the most popular formations. Now, I'm going to show this to you out of the 3-3 Cub. We're also going to cross apply this to Dollar. If you want to get in any of my defensive ebooks on either one of these formations, you can get access to all of them by becoming a Patreon member. It's only $10 uh, to become a Patreon member, and it'll get you access to all of our Madden 23 offensive defensive ebooks, as well as all of the updates to those. And we just dropped one of the best blitzes, I think, of the year in the Patreon uh, in the Patreon for the members. So again, if you want to sign up for that, the link is going to be down in the description. So what is Cover 3 Mabel, right? Uh, you'll probably hear that a lot in the competitive community. People will say I Mabeled covered or I, I, I double Mabeled, right? What does Mabel coverage actually mean? And this is actually a coverage that has been around a lot, but has actually grown in popularity due to the um, institution of zone drops. Because essentially what double Mabel coverage is, is it used to be called double flatting. And so I'll give you kind of a, uh, again, just a brief example. So let me go to bunch. I'm going to start from bunch. We're going to get into tight here in a second. But I do want to start with bunch because bunch is kind of where all this started. So if we come back out and we're going to come out and just put these on default, the only coaching adjustment you're going to need is zone coverage on match. If you're going to run this at a dollar, you might want to have base align on. But basically, we're just going to come out in 3-3 three, three here, and we're going to come out in this cover 2 drop. So what you're going to notice with this cover 2 drop is we have five different yellow zones on the field. Maybe even take this mid read, put them in a middle third. Um, or you know, however we want to make our adjustments, okay? So we have a, a ton of resources that we can utilize. But the problem is essentially this route combination does something that's very interesting. We're gonna high-low the flat defender. So if the flat defender drifts back, then we can throw that little flat route for about five, 10 yards. And then if the flat route, if the flat defender comes up field, so maybe they put him in a hard flat to try to stop the tight end flat route, then what's going to happen is that yellow zone is going to be out leveraged. He's not going to match on properly, and you're going to be able to throw that over the top of the hard flat. So as you can see right there, that kind of gives us a little bit of a dilemma. Now, another route combination that was really, really popular was basically this right here. Essentially, to have a C route and have either a running back out route or a running back table route or something like that. And again, the basic concept is we're going to high low the left side. And so what you'll see here is, oh, he drops back. Okay, I can throw to the flat. And now I can get up field for about 10 to 15 yards. Now, the same thing is also true with the C route. So what you'll see with the C route here is let's say that they're going to, you know, kind of overcommit, try to stop the running back route. Now our high route is going to be open and we can throw that to the sideline, as you can see right there. So double flat was essentially instituted as a way to counter that route combo that I just showed you. And the primary way they do that is they're going to put a hard flat over here on uh, the left. So you see I have a hard flat and a cloud flat. And then the same thing on the right, I'm gonna have a cloud flat, I'm gonna have a hard flat, and then I'm gonna have the safety kind of rolling over the top of the defender, maybe in an outside third like this. Now back side here, this is where you can kind of get interesting in terms of how you wanna adjust this. Typically, you're gonna get something like this right here. And so this is essentially the double flat concept. And now I am going to be in the middle of the field. Now, uh, and what you'll see is this is going to defend kind of high-low concepts relatively well. The cloud flat is going to take away that route. The safety rolling over the top is going to take away the deep fade, right? It's a really, really good concept. But where is it problematic and where can we make it better? The problem with double flat coverage, in my opinion, is that you are selling out to stop the flat. And so you would realistically see defenses like this right here to the bunch side and then on this right side you know maybe you could run whatever um you would see something also similar maybe like i said like a hard flat um from this defender right here and then the user in the middle of the field uh but basically the bottom line is if they run a route combination like this on the back side now all of a sudden those flat routes are going to get pulled up by the running back and the middle of the field is open on both sides so that to me is the core challenge um, with Mabel coverage and something that we've kind of discovered a lot this year that is actually really effective is only Mabel covering one side. And I think this is the proper way to run it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come out in the safety nickelback package out of the nickel 3-3. And we're going to audible into Tampa too. Now with zone drops, we can actually control 
the depths at which they're going to get. And so my favorite way to play this, um, if I was going to want to try to actually do this in game, is I'm going to put these on either 0 or 5, and my flats I'm either going to put on 30 or 25. If they're running a lot of deeper routes, then I'm going to put these on 30. If they're running a lot of like maybe deep out routes or route, like short corners, then maybe I'm going to put these on 25 or 20. Okay? But this is really my foundation. Now, when we run the safety neglect package, we're going to get different adjustments from our safeties. And so what you're going to notice is now what we can do is we can put these safeties in outside thirds, and then we can have those two underneath defenders in purples, and then we're basically the middle third defender. Now, the problem, but what this also gives us is it gives us a plus one cover player over here on the right side. We get that vertical hook to be able to stop any kind of hitch anything in the short intermediate area of the field over on that side. Where this can become a little bit problematic, however, it was a route combo that we saw some in last year's game, which was basically mesh spot like this right here. And so we would have to, as a user defender, go guard that running back route, and then it would leave this seam route over the top as a, for a potential big play or routes similar to that. So the best thing that I know is we do need a post defender. We need somebody that is going to handle the deep middle of the field. And so what I like to do with this is we don't need a 30 yard cloud flat if to the wide side of the field. And so I call this roll coverage, but basically we're gonna do this right here because that outside third, when it is to the wide side of the field, even if they run a streak as a clear out, you're going to be able to consistently defend the corner route on the right, as you saw right there, the corner route was taken away. Now, if my bunch was to the short side of the field, which this is something that's very popular, a lot of people like to do this, and this is how we're gonna get into tight here. But if I, my bunch is to the short side of the field and I run that same exact coverage, everything is the same, okay? Um, everything's exactly the same. The only difference is that where we're at on the field, right? So what you'll see now is if I try to run this route combo, that outside third defender is going to get cleared out. Now, sometimes you'll get a KO, but that's not exactly super, super reliable. Now, if we take that same concept and we apply it over here to the right side, what we would want to do is we want to mabel the, wide, mabel the short side and then uh, cover three, roll cover the, the wide side. So you'll see here, we're going to set up these adjustments now. And what you'll see with this defense is now this 30 yard cloud is going to be able to defend and get underneath this corner. So you see here, this corner really doesn't have a chance at being able to get open. Now you might be saying, really great tip for a gun bunch, but how do I utilize this concept to defend tight? Well, I'm glad that you asked that question. So how do you utilize this concept to defend tight offset tight end or any kind of compression tight set where they can attack either side with corner routes? Well, it's gonna be the same basic rules. So the rule is we want an outside third um, we want to basically roll the coverage to the short side. Now, what I like to do is press and back off the outside corners. I think that's helpful. Um, you don't have to do that, but I do think it's helpful. And then we're going to purple the two linebackers. Okay. Now, from here, what we're going to be able to see here is this PA seams play. A lot of people like to run this. That outside third on the left is going to be able to break down on that route, and a lot of times he'll KO it. He didn't right there, but most people that run PA seams – they are going to run this with their corner routes going to the short side of the field. And so when we recall kind of those basic tenets, those basic rules that I was talking about from a coverage perspective, what is effective, this concept right here still has value, still has play. So now if they run this play like so, what you're gonna notice is this is gonna pretty much be completely guarded. You see here that deep out zone knockout ability uh, on that outside corner is going to be able to play that. He'll either KO it or he'll flat out intercept the ball, okay? And then the other thing you have with this, again, you're in the middle field and really you're gonna be playing more so like a hook curl over in this area right here, but you do wanna blitz your user so that you can get um, the best sheds you possibly can get with that pass rush. So then the only other read they really have here is they're going to try to throw that route right there. But again, your deep out zone knockout should be able to get back there on that. Um, if you just bring your safeties, this is why I like to press and then back off. Because when you press and then back off, your safeties have a little bit better momentum. 
and they're actually going to be able to play better. You do want to pass commit if you're playing someone that's running play action as well. But you'll see here he'll move a little bit better than he did previously. And as you can see right there, that's completely taken away. You're not going to be able to throw that against that coverage shell. So how can you utilize Mabel coverage really as a principle that can cross apply to any formation? All Mabel coverage is, is a high flat to take away a corner route type route and a low flat to take away a drag or a little table route. So you can Mabel one side. You don't have to Mabel both sides. So if I wanted to blitz and still play Mabel coverage, maybe I call maybe I blitz all my linebackers, right? And we're still going to be in Mabel coverage, except now what we're going to do is this defender right here is going to be our underneath our underneath flat route. And then the beauty of this is now I'm going to play the flat over here. So we're still mabling one side of the field. Um, it's just from a user responsibility, right? We're going to need to get over here. Um, you know, but as you can see, if they try to throw those seam routes, that's going to be pretty effective. So this is how Mabel coverage works in Madden. And you can make this coverage concept as adaptable as you want. But it is important to understand that it is very valuable for slowing down any kind of uh, formation that's specifically trying to attack a very certain sideline. My rule of thumb is you want to Mabel the short side and then you want to roll the wide side. What do I mean by that? I mean that we're basically saying that this outside third defender on the right is going to play any corner route to that side, any kind of deep out route to that side. So then what we're able to do is we roll from the wide side to the short side. So we're rolling the safety to the middle, we're rolling this safety over the top, and we have a vertical hook underneath for anything you know that, that we need to be able to defend there. And so like if they run a concept like this, I'm now able to help over here on that post route as you can see right there. Guys, I wanna thank you for watching the video. If you want more detail on how to take your defense to the next level, make sure that you become a Patreon member today. It's only $10 to do so. It's gonna get you access to all of our Madden 23 offensive and defensive eBooks. So thanks for watching the video and head down to the description below and go check out the Patreon page.